Welcome back, all you happy historians. Um, we left off on this slide right here on Friday. Um, talked about Congressional Reconstruction and finishing with the um, the fact that for the first time ever African Americans were elected into the House of Representatives and the Senate, deep into the Senate. And if you did your, if you watched the extra videos, like you always should, hint, 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 watch my extra videos, um, you would see that like 1,500 uh, former slaves, now called freemen, uh, were elected into offices all across the South, not just in the federal level, but in the state levels as well. So it was a pretty good deal um, for them initially. Now, life in the South is going to be interesting during Reconstruction. It's going to be a little different than it was before the Civil War and during the Civil War uh, because of the economic issues and now the social issues, where the money is going to go and all kinds of stuff. So we're going to talk about that today. Um, so, literally, after Sherman's March to the Sea, um, the South was almost completely ruined economically. Uh, and the physical damage, not just of like factories, but of farmland and, and, and animals and what was and was not left, um, it was almost completed or not that of its devastation based on the losses of the war. So they're going to have to come back from almost nothing, and that's going to take some time and some money. You see this picture down here on the left. Uh, remember Sherman's bow ties when he was tearing up the railroad tracks and wrapping them around railroad trees? Well, all those had to be replaced. Uh, they couldn't be used again. That's going to be that's going to take time, money, materials, um, all stuff that the South is is little little is little able to supply uh, directly following the Civil War. So. Life is going to slow down, honestly, in the South, even more than so before, because transportation issues are going to be a huge problem, as well as manufacturing that was already so small compared to the North is now almost non-existent. Um, the banks are going to fail. Businesses are going to go bankrupt. Uh, the railroads are destroyed. Farms are destroyed. Homes have been destroyed. Crops have failed because there haven't been men in the fields to tend them. Um, it's It's almost utter devastation. Uh, it's going to lead to some famine, it's going to lead to some disease, it's going to be a bad time in the South for a lot of people. Uh, not just former Confederates, but the freedmen as well, and, and those that may, might have supported the North even though they live in the South. Like Everyone's going to have a rough time initially after the war due to the utter devastation. Um, you're going to have you're going to have spending that's going to have to be focused on infrastructure. So when we talk about infrastructure, we're talking about railroads. Uh, we're talking about waterworks, building physical things that we use every day. So the government is going to focus its spending efforts on rebuilding the cities that were destroyed, like Atlanta and Savannah, uh, Chattanooga, Vicksburg, all these, where we had all these battles, right? Uh, you know, these cities, Richmond is destroyed. All these cities have to be rebuilt. Uh, the railroads throughout the South, utter devastation. Look at the bottom, picture on the bottom right, shows you a close up of what the railroad looked like after, uh, Union forces marched through. You can see those railroad ties are bent on a 90 degree angle, never to be used again. Um, they have to be melted down and reformed. Uh, the railroad ties, the cross beams, the wood that goes in the railroad bed that the rails sit on. Um, a lot of times they were burned or, or broken. Um, the devastation in the middle picture, you see the city that's literally buildings crumbling uh, into the streets and just piles of debris. Okay, All of this stuff has to be rebuilt and it's going to take a lot of time. Now, those paying the taxes, which is going to, the burden is going to fall on the southern whites because they're the ones making the money. Um, they hated taxes. I mean, no American loves taxes, let's be honest. Uh, but they really hated the taxes required for rebuilding and they were, they kind of took it personal that the union itself, like the whole country, um, wasn't paying for the devastation that the union forces brought upon their cities. Now, again, they're ignoring the fact that they committed treason by separating um, you know, the taxes are one thing, they're already suffering the, the, just the bitter taste of defeat, uh, and, and they're just, a lot of them are furious about the political changes, as we see Friedman getting into positions of power, 
and the social changes. So now that slavery is gone, uh, the freedoms that the African American community now has, and how they um, how they're integrating into society. Uh, and at the end of the day, um, they don't blame themselves for losing the war. They don't blame themselves for having the wrong ideas. Uh, they don't even honestly blame the freedmen themselves so much. Uh, they blame the radical Republicans, Lincoln's political party, who fought for the abolition of slavery and persecuted the war, and who is now in charge of Reconstruction, Congressional Reconstruction, and doing these very, very harsh measures um, to really punish the South and, and, and force them to come back into the Union as they, one, literally ask for forgiveness, two, make new constitutions, three, ensure that they ratify 13, 14, and 15th Amendment. All these things have to take place, and it's, it's a bitter pill to swallow uh, for a lot of former Confederates. Now remember, it's not just about the slavery issue, it's, it's the state's rights, and it's it's that, that state versus federal power, like the whole, are you a Texan or a Virginian, or are you an American first? You know, which, which one is it? And that battle rages. And, and today, it might be easier on us to look like, okay, we're Americans and we live in Texas. Uh, but back then, with, with the country the way it was, it was very much local. A lot of people didn't travel outside their state. It, it was very much, I am a Virginian, or I am a... Um, Mississippian, this is where I'm from, this is where I was raised, this is where I'll live and die, this is my one uh, focus. So as you can see, uh, with the destruction, they're going to blame outside forces for their issues. Now, the South is going to have an influx of interesting characters come in here. Um, first, let's talk about how the now freed slaves are going to make their living. Honestly, they're going to continue doing it about the same way they did before, uh, but we're going to introduce what's called sharecropping. So initially, 1865, 1870, that period, uh, you're going to see a lot of the former slaves, the freedmen and their families, they're going to be reunited, which is a great thing, obviously, because some of them have been separated, uh, but they're going to live in utter poverty. So sharecropping is, is what replaced slave labor. So the landowner is going to lease the land to those now freed slaves. He's going to provide them equipment to process the fields. Okay, he's, a lot of times he's going to give them the seeds to plant. Uh, he's going to give them all this stuff. Payment for all that, for the lease and the equipment and the seeds, um, is going to come with the crop when it's processed, when it's done. Uh, the slaves, excuse me, the freedmen are going to get to keep maybe a third of the crop, maybe as much as a half, but usually not that much. Um, and that's what they had to live on for the rest of the year. So if you plant a whole field of cotton, uh, and two-thirds of it goes to the guy that owns the land and has the equipment and everything, you've got this little bitty just bit left over, this one-third of your profits. Um, are you able to go anywhere? No. Are you able to buy your own land? Nope. Um, are you able to buy your own equipment? Nope. How about seeds? No. Um, so it just leads to this cycle of, of debt uh, that keeps many of the freedmen in just utter poverty. Uh, they're tied to the land still, almost like they were slaves. Now, true, they're free, but they're not able to be mobile financially or even socially. So sharecropping is going to be an interesting thing. It's going to continue long past Reconstruction. And in the end, um, eventually, poor whites are going to make up a larger share of sharecroppers uh, following Reconstruction in the end of the early 1900s, all the way up to the Dust Bowl period, 1920s, um, 1930s. It's, it's, it's going to shift where the poor whites take on the burden of that sharecropping. So, but we still have this system where the top few, that top 1%, those plantation owners, uh, since they got to keep their land under Johnson's plan, um, now they're renting it out to their former slaves and now poor whites, and they're still making the majority of the money and the benefit from that land, and those working land are just barely getting by day to day to day. Um, you're going to have <coughs> groups pop up that are violently, in many cases, uh, opposed to 
the end of slavery and, and the continuation of the civil rights for this newly free group of people. Um, one that I'm sure you've heard of before, uh, the Ku Klux Klan. And, you know, they're still around today in some form or fashion. Uh, but in Reconstruction, they were really, really, they were a large organization made up of many former Confederates. Um, Bedford Forrest was one of the um, founding members. He was a Confederate cavalry officer. So it was a secret society. So you really didn't know who was in it. That's why they wore the hoods. And granted, most people knew who you were. But um, And it was established by white supremacists. And their idea, their whole goal was to terrorize the freedmen and to keep them down, keep them at the bottom of the social ladder, uh, to make their lives as miserable as possible, to, to just utterly, as best they could, continue the traditions of slavery without it being called slavery. Um, so they targeted African Americans and anyone supporting or helping them. So it wasn't just um, the color of your skin here, it was who you were and who you helped. If you were a Republican in the South, uh, you could be targeted by the Ku Klux Klan. Um, burning houses, burning crosses in your yard, lynchings, where they would literally grab you up and hang you from the nearest tree. Um, some terrible, terrible issues that go down with the Ku Klux Klan. Um, the Army is going to focus on its efforts under Ulysses S. Grant to stamping out and putting down these secret societies like the Klan. Um, they're going to they're going to be somewhat successful. It's going to it's going to continue though. However, through the next really the next hundred years um, before it really takes a takes a, a death blow from the federal government with with civil rights in the sixties and, and the whole push of the FBI attacking directly. Um, focusing their efforts on, on dismantling the Klan. Um, as you can see, Reconstruction lasted 12 years technically, but the process and the issues are going to last a hundred years past the end of slavery. And even now we talk about things that still need to change. Uh, and if you watched some of my videos, you would have seen that, that the process is, is, is going to be a slow process, right? People don't change overnight. Uh, the, the key here to making successful change uh, is education and, and the individual making the choice to step away from racism or anything that is, that is keeping them a group down. Um, it's not something that the government can just mandate. That doesn't change anybody's mind. And, and policies that were put in place by the government, as you can see, have failed for a hundred years. So. It's going to be a slower process. Um, it's going to it's going to take effort from both uh, the white population and the now freed African population, African American population, um, as they educate themselves and join society. You know, the white society has to, the whites have to come together with them, um, and that has happened over the years. It's, it's more and more an intermeshed society than it has ever been. Um, just the process took a long time, and some of the basis of that issue falls with Reconstruction. Um, the end is going to come when the radical Republicans eventually lose power in the House and the Senate. Um, Reconstruction's cost a lot of money. There's a lot of soldiers that have been in the Army for a long time. They're ready to go home. They're based in the South. And it's just, it's just the American population decides it's time for a change. Now also keep in mind the, with the with allowing former Confederates to vote, getting that power back, uh, you see the Democratic Party gain more power. Um, one of the unintended issues that you see in the South with voting power, um, the former slaves who were counted three out of every five, they're now freedmen and counted one for one for population. So the, the political power in the South actually goes up after the Civil War uh, with the end of slavery, and you're going to see that with the Republicans losing power. Um, you're going to have issues with scandal and corruption that kind of plague Ulysses Grant's um, terms as president, and, and it kind of taints the Republican Party a little bit, and they lose power because of it. You're going to see some of Grant's former um, associates in the Army take advantage of some, some positions that he's put them in, and, and Grant was never tried directly to any of this. Uh, but being a boss, you know, you get the benefit, or you get the blame for, for what goes wrong in your administration. Um, in 1873, we're going to have a huge stock market crash, um, and unemployment is going to skyrocket. 
called the Panic of 1873. And this, when economics fall into play, when the economy gets rough, a change at the top usually follows. So the Republicans are in charge when this happens. Um, we're going to make a change and go to the Democrats. Uh, on top of this, during these next elections, you're going to have the KKK being successful in restricting Republican voting in the South. Um, they're going to close polls. They're going to they're going to intimidate people directly and indirectly. Um, they're just going to make themselves a general nuisance, and it's going to reduce the the number of people that actually vote Republican that actually vote at all in the South, giving them the ability to elect um, Democrats, many times former Confederates. Uh, and, and we're going to see this cycle come back where, yeah, slavery is outlawed, but we're going to continue these, uh, these black codes and that things like that. Um, in the election of 1876, um, there was a dispute uh, between the presidents. Okay. Um, it, it's going to come down between a Republican, Rutherford Hayes, and a Democrat, Samuel Tilden. And it's going to be, like, so close as far as votes that it's it's impossible to call, honestly. You can see the electoral vote, it's 50-50 with a one-vote difference. Um, that's where we're going to have this interesting compromise that takes place. Now, pay attention to this map. The blue are voters, or Democrat voters. Um, you can see that still a few of the southern states are voting Republican, but even more the northern states are now voting Democrat, and that's what ties up the election. Um, when you have a tie, well, just like before, we're going to have to have a compromise. So Hayes and Tilden are kind of going head to head, and, and we're going to have a compromise. So basically, Congress gets together and, and they kind of work out a plan, and it's not written down, it, it's just kind of a gentleman's agreement spoken. Um, that is basically just going to end Reconstruction as it stands. We're going to pull the army out, and the money's going to go back. And we're not going to spend any money on the, on the army anymore, and we're going to to just let the South do the South. We're, we're they're they're admitted back in the Union. Everybody's good to go, and and we're just going to go back to normal. And that's what the compromise basically did. Now to do that, um, Hayes is going to become president, so the Republican president is going to continue, but but the removal of the Southern troops in the South means he's got almost no power to put down the KKK, to 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 handle the issues between the freedmen and the white population. And this is going to be um, an, a difficult time again in the South, particularly for those those now freed African Americans, as they are left without any sort of protections um, at all. Um, you're going to have this this redemption of Southern power. So some Southern Democrats, former Confederates, are going to come rushing back into power. They're going to cut they're going to cut funding for education, which sounds ridiculous, but that's what they're doing because it's going to restrict the the, the education of the freedmen. Um, they're going to restrict voting rights. They're going to pass segregation laws. Um, like you'll see signs like this. Or excuse me, this is a poll tax. You'll see. You'll see um, segregation as in whites go in this bathroom, colors go in this bathroom. Um, whites can go in the front door of the, of the restaurant and sit in the front. Um, any of the black population has to go in the back and sit at the counter. It's things like that. That segregating, keeping the races apart was a huge push in the South after the Compromise of 1877. Um, some of the restricted voting, you're going to see tests and taxes uh, put in place that's going to limit the number of people who can actually vote. Uh, the bottom left, you'll see a poll tax receipt. You had to pay a dollar fifty uh, to vote. Well, if you are dirt poor, you have an extra dollar fifty or three dollars. You know, if you get two people trying to vote, uh, no, you don't. Uh, this poll tax it was in 1932, so women could vote by this time. Uh, the 19th Amendment had been passed in 1920, so so three dollars. To, to a family making $300 a year total, that's a lot of money. Uh, and they just couldn't afford it, and they didn't spend it there. Uh, you also had things like literacy tests on the bottom right. Um, if you couldn't read, you couldn't answer the test. And if you couldn't go to school because education funding had been cut, you couldn't read. 
Okay, all these things kind of built upon each other that are going to to continue the tradition of of keeping um, the African American population in the South out of politics and out of power as much as possible. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm almost better. I know I still sound funny, but I'm getting there. Um, with the end of Reconstruction, you're going to see about another hundred years of some, some tumultuous times in the South. And we'll, we'll finish up with that on the last lecture tomorrow. Um, make sure you're watching the videos, guys, all the way to the end. And if you're just clicking through this and getting the information, you're missing out on so much that I'm telling you that's not written down. So I hope that y'all learned over the course of the year that you really got to listen. It's only 20 minutes. It's not the whole, you know, your class is supposed to be 50. I'm only asking for a third of that. So let's make sure that we're listening to these videos and watching the additional videos too because it gives you some great information and, and, and viewpoints both ways. All right. Um, we'll finish this up with our next lecture. See y'all later.